On today's episode, we break down a sensational Super Bowl with a Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City Chiefs victory, and we jump into the mailbag. A lot of fun off-season questions, some wackiness, some zaniness. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a show all off-season, and enjoy. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The 2024 season has begun. Yes, sir. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Happy to be with you. Well, well, well. Patrick does it again. Looks like everyone you knew was right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's as close as it gets for I, – I was really kind of rooting for a um, a double overtime. But I guess it you know, wouldn't have mattered because they would have just won and double. Overtime. I know, I know, I know. And um, this is our first opportunity to react to what you saw two days ago. Uh, thrilling, mm -hmm. repetitive, slow burn. You know, it was a slow burn. And you, you, you guys know me. Like I'm yep. all offense. I'll take you know. If the NFL were to say we're doing ten guys on defense, I would be like, heck yeah. I absolutely loved that game. I mean, I just thought it was – it was one it was of the actually, best Super Bowls I can remember. I, I thought it was tremendous. First half was my fault. <laughs> first half was my What'd fault because do? I was doing a lot of grilling during the first half, and I didn't want to miss anything significant. Gotcha. And so gotcha. I asked him to slow it up. Okay. And once the burgers were in hand, they got it going. But, um, no, I mean, it, it, it was – we all knew, everybody in the world knew what was going to happen at the end of the game. Um, I think Kyle well, Shanahan deep down the, knew. The 49ers didn't because they didn't know the rules. Well, they didn't know the rules, <laughs> and, and let me be honest, neither did I. Hey, I I, I didn't know the rules either, I, it, but you know what? I'm not an NFL head coach. <laughs> I My whole mindset, like I, I missed the part where they put the, the renovated rules is the first time they've ever played under them. I was still in regular season mode. T tell the people what those are because so, I think – Yes. Based on us not knowing, I think there's a lot of people that might not yeah, even I'm, be aware. I'm not now. A, ashamed to admit that I just I I blanked out like the uh, like half of the 49ers players didn't know. Where in the regular season, both teams must possess the ball unless the first team possessing the ball scores a touchdown. That ends the game in the regular season. In the playoffs, both teams must possess the ball, except for one rare condition, which is if the first team with the ball. They get sacked for a safety. The game ends. Or defensive score too. Just any defensive score. Uh, no, ju just a safety. What? I think that's it's true. Just really? a safety. Yeah. So See, we pick, still don't know the rules. We got to look into that. I uh, would, it, uh, it is supposed to be just a safety. A pick six doesn't like a pick six is then both teams have possessed the ball. Um, but I, Mike, I, Mike, don't argue with me. Argue I don't with know. The, man. Argue with the rule. I don't know. Um, you can you can correct me. I could be wrong, but. I went into overtime just saying, like, on that fourth down play when they kicked the field goal with Jake Moody down in the, near the red zone, I was like, you have to go for it there because you don't want to give Mahomes the ball, but he would have gotten the ball anyway. And then the Chiefs have come out and said they were going to go for two if, yep. they had, if they had scored the touchdown, and they would have gotten the two because they're the Chiefs. And uh, here we are. Kyle Shanahan is sad again. This is, the, this is the third Super Bowl of sadness. He should stop trying to get to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't go well for him. So he he can avoid this sadness. So if he just just like celebrate the NFC Championship game like he won the Super Bowl. No, I'm just and then say, hey, you guys take it from here. <laughs> I did my job. I'm it, saying slow down on the winning. Just you know what mm. I mean. You, if you lose a little earlier in the season, you don't have. I see what you're quite saying. as significant a loss. Yeah. So so we we have another we have a dynasty, and we already have reports. Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, both returning. They'll have an opportunity next year, likely with far better wide receivers, to do what no team in the history of the National Football League has ever done, 
which is to win three consecutive Super Bowls. Uh, this will be the storyline of the entire year, and it's exactly what Roger Goodell would like it to be. Yeah, and for fantasy football, the fantasy football world at least, Travis Kelsey has let us know that he is going for the three-peat, so he, he'll he be back. Yeah, so... Um, also, he was very mad at Andy Reid. Yes. <laughs> that blew my mind when he was screaming at Andy Reid like that right in his face. Well, uh, I mean, m mistakes happened when he was not on the field. And he was, I mean, if I, Travis Kelsey wasn't getting the ball. And he was just like, get me the ball. Throw me, plant, scheme me up, man. Well, I, I would have been mad if I were a superstar too. So and that not was, getting the ball. That was the kind of like second story. Taylor's watching this. <laughs> you know that, right? She's up there. The Super Bowl was the kind of the second big storyline on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. The big one, obviously, the ultimate draft kit. Obviously. Yeah, baby. Available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. In fact, if you order it before March first. You get a chance to come play with us in the Listener League. We're going to give an entry away to our Listener League. Uh, you get it at the lowest possible price. You get $15 worth of gift cards uh, to Shop Ballers and Fantasy Champs. You get a free digital copy of our uh, book, which is the uh, Fantasy Football Unleashed 55 Tips, Tricks, and Ways to 55! Thank you to Win. And uh, the mobile app is available now, too. So, ultimatedraftkit.com. This is the time you want to get in there. Uh, if you get the UDK Plus, all of our Dynasty Pass content is available right now, which means sure is. rookie rankings, Dynasty startup rankings, uh, team opportunity pages, trade targets for Dynasty, um, a whole lot of great Dynasty resources, which, look, we're, we're jumping right in. I mean, it's 2024 preseason right now yeah and, and even if even though you're getting the dynasty stuff right now it will continue to update as the season goes along and obviously if you're getting the dynasty information you're getting the udk plus which means you'll have the the draft analyzer for after your draft you'll have in-season content for any dfs and uh, betting that we do throughout the year it's just a really good deal right now um and like andy said if you get it before march 1st you can maybe get in the listener league play with us Anything to add, Mike? Are you, you all good? Nope. Good. I mean, well, it's great. The UDK. Mm -hmm. I love it. Personal reactions to the Super Bowl. I didn't want to see love it. sad <laughs> Shanahan. I had picked the 49ers to win by three. You guys yeah. both picked the Chiefs. You're obviously geniuses. I mean, Thank just you. Thank you. Yeah. unrivaled. Uh, yeah. I, what, what's the situation in Deucer's Alley? Who were you guys rooting for? I was pulling for the Niners. You yeah. were? Yeah, I rooting for Niners. Now, that, mm. that actually, Papa Josh? Niners. I was actually shocked by that reply from Al Borland because you 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 went a different direction than Jordan Love, your quarterback. Because Jordan Love said verbatim, the Niners just beat us. There's no way I can root for them. But I guess you don't really – Yeah, don't... I mean, there's some advantage to losing to the number one team. Yeah. And there's oh, is also... that the story you want? I like Brock Purdy a lot. So. That mm -hmm. is a common ration, you know, a way to rationalize your defeat. Yeah. Like, I've done that before. Like, if – when we played flag football, if the team that beat us went on to win the title, you're like, ah, I lost uh -huh. to them. Yeah, I lost to the best for sure. Uh, but you, the, I guess that <laughs> I, that means the Packers did not lose to the best. I think most of the world was rooting for the 49ers. Uh, it's it's fun to see greatness, to see a dynasty and all that, but also you get sick of it, you get tired of it. I was not rooting for the Chiefs until they were up against the Niners. As a Cardinal fan, I'm, it's it's against my religion too. Yes. Root for yeah. the 49ers. Yeah, I, I guess to be fair, I was kind of rooting hard for the Lions on Sunday. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, we had Kelsey with 9 for 93 in that game. McCall Hardman, 3 for 57 because, of course. You now have you were... Har Hardman, Tony, and Sky Moore are the receivers that caught touchdowns in the Super Bowl the last three years. Justin Watson and McCall Hardman, the leading wide receivers. Like, Rashi Rice did very little. You, you, you brought it up before the show but the fact that last year the stars were Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore and this year the stars were MVS you know and and McCall Hardman and back-to-back and -back Super Bowl victories they don't I mean goodness gracious you don't how is that possible how can you have that level well, of you still had Travis uh, sure I mean you've got you've got Kelsey Nine for there, 93 but, I mean it just seems impossible that those weapons can win a Super Bowl. 
they had a super difficult path getting to the Super Bowl and to win it, and it's just we're watching a legend. He's got better numbers before 30 than Brady did. You know, three Super Bowls, three Super Bowl MVPs. It's unbelievable. So credit where credit is due. He just I, – I kept saying he's like uh, Steph Curry. Yeah. It's like you, you give him the ball at the end of the game, you're like, hey, you, everyone knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and the, the Kansas City defense was pretty awesome. Specifically second halves in the playoffs, Steve Spagnola in the second half of games. Like, we, we were all mocking the fact that, like, the Ravens stopped running the football. Well, guess what? I mean, the 49ers stopped running the football until they, you know, towards the very end they, they handed it off a few more times. But, you know, they had they had three yards or something through the first, all of the third quarter. It was just kind of a, a defensive gym. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I got to give a shout out to Peter Schrager. I mean, okay. this dude. He has called the Super Bowl like I don't know how many years in a row now. He has got it right before Just the, the beginning winner, of the the winner. Be, yeah, be, the the winner. It's like five or six years in a row before the beginning of before what? Before the beginning of the season that he has been correct. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got the winner. He's got the winner so many times in a row. It's un wow. it's impossible. So he got Especially he got the look, Tampa. He got the Tampa, he got the Rams, he got uh in in fact like if if So he, to, he oh, both teams? Well, he doesn't this year always, he did. He's this Chiefs year he over 49ers. Yeah, Chiefs over 49ers. I mean, it's like at this point we now know Coming from it, the future? it is no, it, it is the script. Mm. I mean, he, you know, okay. uh, he works with the NFL. He's 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 part of the writing staff, obviously. All right, let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Well, it is going to be news season, and uh, get this, guys. The Patriots, okay. Mac Jones, yeah, unlikely to be their quarterback. <laughs> what? <laughs> Likely a trade candidate. Oh, man, people banging down the door. <laughs> what a shocker. Begging, begging to give their seventh round pick away. Jim Harbaugh came out and said Austin Eckler is, quote, a tremendous back. We'd love to have him back on the Chargers. There's a way. Oh, yeah. I don't think tremendous from Jim Harbaugh is going to translate to tremendous in Austin Eckler's uh, bank yeah. account. I think the the tremendous gap, maybe, in financial uh, compensation. Well, but, you cut the quote off. It was the actual quote was tremendous back. We'd love to keep him on the Chargers for free is what the rest that, of the quote was. Yeah, was we just cut of off the for free part. I don't think they're going to pay him a lot of money. Cole Komet said uh, he sustained a broken right forearm in week 18, so he'll be – he's got an offseason right. to recover. Yep. And this was one of the storylines getting tossed <laughs> yeah, around. Here I mean, we go. It, this is what I mean. It's <laughs> it's like – it's news season. This is the good stuff. Uh, the Bears want historic compensation for the number one overall pick. So if somebody wants to come at it – honestly, for this to get out there, this is more Caleb Williams' confirmation to me. Which, I I know we've had a lot of discussions about what the Bears should do. But to me, the ending of this season further confirms my position on it. Mm -hmm. Which is that you don't win Super Bowls. And I mean this in the statistical percentage opportunity. Yes, I know Trent Dilfer exists. Yes, I know that, that Foles won a Super Bowl. Flacco. And Flacco, yes. But you're, you're not going to be able to go very long. Here in this, no, I'm in the, done with the, the uh, guys I can think of that aren't legends. You winning don't Super Bowls. win Super Bowls without legends at quarterback, and and Justin Fields is fine, but teams that think that they can win a Super Bowl with Derek Carr and Ryan Tannehill and Daniel Jones, and you know Justin Fields is in that category mm -hmm. to me right now. I think we as a fantasy community, we look at Justin Fields and we elevate him. Slightly more than the NFL community will. It's possible because we know, you know, the numbers that he puts up statistically in the passing game are very, you know, they're below average. But because of the running game, we see him as a dominator on a weekly basis. But to me, it's like you have to move on because you you and you're probably not getting a legend. Let, let me just say that, like this in is, Caleb Williams. Sure, yeah, like your odds are not that yeah. you get him a Mahomes. Like yep. your odds are that you don't. 
But you have to keep trying, and you have to keep rebuilding. Every team out there, you have to keep trying to get a legend. Yeah, and if you've got the number one pick and you've got the opportunity of drafting someone touted to potentially be a legend, you, I, I agree with you. I was, I was on the keep fields side. The defense was getting better, get a ton of compensation, just build a really rock-solid team around Justin Fields. I think they could do that and win, and win a lot, and not win the Super Bowl. And if that is your goal, and that's obviously every team's goal, then you've got to, I completely agree with you. I've I've flipped. You have to take the chance at finding, you know, a a, a Hall of Famer. You 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 win Super Bowls with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to weigh in at all, Mike. That's just it's crazy. Yeah. And and a lot of people would come out and say, Okay, look, you get Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, these are the people that lost to Patrick Mahomes this year. But they also are Super Bowl winning capable quarterbacks. You, it's hard because it, like what you're describing is basically like the 49ers, where the 49ers as a team. I mean, the 49ers in that game, like they they kicked the Chiefs' butt they for really the did. vast majority of the game. Like, no, they they I mean, did. I, I wouldn't say that the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball was just. They didn't get dominated. A, they didn't get a first down from the four minute mark, like four minutes into the second quarter to the end of the third quarter. The 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 49ers didn't have a first down in a, almost two full quarters. Right, but but the Chiefs weren't doing much better. Oh, defensively, the 49ers were exceptional. That's yeah. I'm saying just the, until the, they the ran team, out of gas. Clearly, the the team I thought the 49ers were actually the better team, and some things just because football is wild, things just hit right for the Chiefs at the right time. It's uh, the 49ers are the example of the Foles, Flacco. Yes. Like, if you build a perfect roster around yeah. that quarterback, you can do it in the right yes. year. Yeah. So, for Fields, I mean, I would, I'd be open to both. I think the quote is more of like, if I'm the GM and I have the number one pick and Caleb Williams and, or whoever it is, which quarterback you like out of this crop, I'm just letting people know. Don't waste my time. Like I'm giving you a friendly courtesy. Don't waste my time. If you're going to call for the number one pick, you saw what I got last year. We'll start there. You know, like well, give me a, a top tier wide receiver and a trade back and a bunch of picks. Maybe we'll talk then. Look, I are, I know we're all excited about the draft already because we've been doing some scouting. We've yep. got our, our initial release of the rookie rankings in the UDK Plus, and and there are some really really good football players in this upcoming draft. And uh, I know the dynasty trade offers are already going out there. I do want to talk about one more Super Bowl thing before we jump in the mail. Sure. Which is because of the overtime rules. Philosophically, people have different opinions mm. on whether you should defer. Right. Or whether you should take the ball. Now, I have my thoughts on it, but I'd like to get your reaction i am on the defer side and i i i could see both and actually i think it, it it makes it really really even like super fair um for for both teams to have a legitimate chance uh, at winning but the value of going for it on fourth down is i mean if 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 you stop them obviously you can go down and win win the game it's over but if you don't stop them and they come down and score a touchdown or a field goal, now you get four downs every single play, and it's hard. It's hard to stop. Like four downs per play is really <laughs> special. It's <laughs> that's hard, unique. It's hard to stop any NFL team that is constantly going forward on fourth that knows on second down that what they yes, can call a, yes. as a play call, they've got three more downs to go. It's um, I think it's a really unfair advantage where. If a team actually played that way, like you just can't. You can't risk it. When it goes wrong, you're going to get just shoveled poop all over you as the head coach. But I do think if a team actually played that way, they would score so many points and win a lot of games. Because going for it on fourth, like you've seen the – like there was some college – I, I think it was a college or, or yeah. maybe it was a high school. Where, I think it was a high school. Where, um, you know, they, they were like this last place team and they just decided we're going to go for it on every single yeah. fourth down. No punts. Right, never punt. And, and, and it's like completely changed the program. Obviously, it's very different from the NFL. But I think 
And yeah, the turning second. the ball over in your own zone it, two times in a row will end that. The, That'll be the end. Yeah, the, I, going with that strategy, you're going to have huge wins or huge losses. Like there, there won't be close games, but I believe the follow-up on the story of that coach was then he was, of course, picked up by a different program, and then they just got shellacked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it, there's it a work. fourth and four and fourth and 15. I mean, that, yeah. those are just vastly different things. To me – I would have taken the ball. One, because the 49ers defense had been on the field so much and they needed rest. And two, because if the game ends up tied on two field goals, you're the first team in sudden death in that situation. But I do agree with your the basic thing you said, Jay, which is, is really fair. If there's a debate to be had now in overtime on whether you defer or take the ball, mm -hmm. that tells you they designed it the right way. Yes. As opposed to, Whoever wins the coin toss wins the game. I mean that that's how it was. And yeah, the, the, the the it's 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 so wild of the the pressure to get a touchdown with that first possession it, like of not just making up a well now the other team has to score a touchdown. What I'm saying, you kick the field goal, and now what Jason was saying of this team has four downs, and all they have to get to keep the game going is a field goal, but they can now have a huge opportunity to go get a touchdown. Yep. I would defer. I don't think you're wrong of the – A lot more pressure look, on that side. Looking at your team of – my defense is exhausted. Right. So, which the the 49ers got their defense a massive amount of rest on defense with that uh, – with the opening drive of overtime. So, they should have been ready to go. The, the 49ers had two – I mean, when it comes down to it, they had two opportunities for their defense to get a stop. The end of regulation at the end of overtime, they couldn't do it either time, and that was the difference. And the either stop and you win the Super Bowl. Did you guys see the clip of the Hardman touchdown was almost identically what the uh, oh yeah the other the Tony yeah. touchdown was in the yeah, last because Super Andy Bowl. Reed eats just, your, he just he eats your lunch, man. He, he sat on he, that he, play. He, he's that's why he's he yeah. eats your lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's try it again with those nuggies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Quick break. Back with some mailbag today. All right, first mailbag of 2024, Mike. Here we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. <laughs> That's good, Mike. Don't worry. Don't I you startled get, myself at don't the you end. Get worried about that. <laughs> if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. And um, here we go. The first question comes from Instagram. Christian Bjorn writes in, which 2023 first rounder will fall the furthest in ADP in 2024? So, Ooh. Brooks, do you – oh, you do have it here. So, the first round last year, consensus was CMC, Jefferson, Chase, Eckler, Kelsey, Hill, Robinson, Saquon, Chubb. Oh, yeah, it's Chubb. Diggs, <laughs> yeah. Brown, Henry. Okay, it, take Chubb out. <laughs> Yeah, I, would. I, I don't know if that's true. Really? Yeah, I mean, if he's in camp and he's going to play, he's not going to drop further than than some of these guys. I would be yeah. very surprised if it is not Nick Chubb based on the injury. But if if I told you Nick Chubb was going to play in Week One, are you are you would you disagree? Uh, I or mean, would obviously, you change your we, opinion. We'll we'll have to know where Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry are playing football, or if they're playing football. Those are the the three players. Um, those three running backs to me are the question marks going into next season. You don't think there's a chance Kelsey's the lowest of these guys? I would be surprised if one of those three running backs doesn't drop it, look very at the, far. The list is is fun in terms of fantasy turnover because Eckler, Kelsey, I don't think are first-rounders next year. Nick Chubb, I would I would be surprised. Stephon Diggs is not going to be a first-rounder. Derrick no. Henry will not. Mm -mm. So... It's it's going to be fun because there will be a huge turnover. In the yeah, you're going to have you're going to have uh, Brees in the first round now, most likely. Yeah, um, you I, guys will be happy to know that with Kelsey's announcement to return next year, I will be riding. Oh you're, yeah, I'm going to be riding with That's, my old men once again. That will be that will be a gigantic question of the offseason for Dynasty football. What do you do with Travis Kelsey? I'm riding. If you if you have a team that can win, Kelsey feels like a player that you just at this point. 
into just, the just, sunset. Just let him turn into dust on your roster and oh. get what you can get. Yeah, you're you're putting on the cowboy hat. I did notice. Yeah, you're climbing on his oh, back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he is he is crawling <laughs> towards the sun. Piggyback. Oh yeah. He is crawling towards the sun. This is he's a just, strong man. Oh yeah. I mean, look, he's uh, he, he, he's not going to have a problem. I'm I'm a heavy guy. He no problem. He's get also on, get on. I mean, he looks a lot like his brother now that he grew that beard out too. The uh, the playoff run for Travis Kelsey has to give you at least a decent Abs amount of hope. Absolutely. I wanted to pull up our dynasty. He was great. For I'm pulling games. up our dynasty startup rankings. Okay. And um, I wanted to see where we were ranking tight ends. And so I have Kelsey at three still. Okay. Jason, you have him at seven. Mm hmm. Mike, you have him at five. Yep. These are the hardest players to rank in Dynasty. He is impossible. They're, they're the hardest players possible to rank when they have one or two year expiration, right? Yep. But right now, that would mean that, um, you know, Kittle, Kincaid are guys that you have ahead of Kelsey. Mike, you have. You both have McBride ahead of him, Hawkinson ahead of him. It, it's funny on our. It's, it's wild. It's on a tough our, call. Uh, champ, champ, champ. Hawkinson versus Kelsey is very difficult. Our our champ, champ, champ team yeah. where we won back to back to back. We have Kelsey and McBride on that roster. When I was doing my startup rankings, it was re really helpful to be like, well, what, which one would I rather have? And it's it was really clear ha having both of them on our roster is like McBride is a much better asset for Dynasty. If this was a startup draft. There's no way I would take Kelsey over McBride. But I wonder how many starts you start one tight end, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'll be curious who starts more games for you next year, and that's where the nuance is in the dynasty startup because if yeah. you drafted a dynasty startup team mm -hmm. that's built to win today, or you die, McBride's such a better future asset. But next year you might start Kelsey more than McBride. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's wild. It's um. I'll just say this out loud. I don't know if we'll be able to pull it off at some point, but I really would like to have some, I'll call them situational, like, toggles for rankings, especially in Dynasty, okay. where you can say something like, hey, I, like, because we had a debate this last weekend, um, two quarterback rankings right? Uh, in our Dynasty pass. Jason and I, uh, are more aligned in our view of the quarterback position in a two quarterback startup draft. Yep. Where we have, uh, they're not all ranked the same by any stretch of the imagination, but they're all but in the just same. Your, your, where your line of elevation. Yes. For the value. So, like, we, you know, I think, uh, Jason, you had like two at 25 in the startup, and I'm at 21, and Mike had them outside the top 50. Right. You know, or I, me and you had Herbert at five and six, and then Mike had them outside the top 15 because Mike philosophically. Underval or not? Un I don't want to say it like a. No, it's an, I. I just view it differently. You devalue them because you yes. like building the team more traditionally, like a one quarterback, and then finding value at, at quarterback later in a yeah, two quarterback. That and and on top of who, like the the quarterbacks, especially like the, the decision, especially like Patrick Mahomes, right, has been the number one dynasty quarterback for. I mean, him and it, Josh Allen have flipped, yeah. but it's like and in a two quarterback. Patrick Mahomes is in that range where you feel like this is an untouchable player for my team. But the last couple of years, like Mahomes has just been good. Like he it, it's well, this not year. It, where where did he finish last year? I let me go. I'll pull up. Where, he was one. Uh yeah, he, okay, he was. But, <laughs> but so last yes, last year when I said but Quarterback but you, four. You're in saying 21. because of variability, you get locked into one guy. Yeah. If you invest a high pick. In 2018, the the breakout campaign where it was holy crap, Patrick Mahomes 5,050. Then he was the QB eight. Then he was four. Then he was four. Then he was one. But this then is, he was eight. This is where I'm saying like I'd like to be able to be in the dynasty startup drafts under two quarterback, and click a toggle that says, um, later round quarterbacks. Well, you yeah. can. You just sort by Mike. <laughs> Okay. That's the toggle. That's fair. The toggle. Like, the if you, toggle want, is if you Mike. want that toggle, click All right. Mike. All right. So um, next question comes from uh, Lab on IG. Who are the top five draft picks for 2024? I mean, McCaffrey, Jefferson, Jefferson, Lamb, Chase. Are they all in there? Um, Hill, Bijan. I don't think Bijan will be top five. I don't think he'll be top five. So your four quarterbacks. So you you just went uh, exactly what the 
Uh, yeah. Oh, with the best ball ADP. That's what the best is, ball yeah. ADP is. But I think that there are going to be – there will be discussions for Bijan if you get excitement around Robinson, Zach Robinson coming in. Um, maybe Brees Hall. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You agree with that, Jay? Four wide receivers and, yeah, a, and a running back? I, I do think it will be that. All right. Brandon writes in, keeper pick for 2024. Would you rather keep Gibbs or Mark Andrews? When you're mm. looking at keeper selections, this is a good kind of overview opportunity. If uh, this question does not have any round compensation stated, generally you want to look at keeper situations like this relative to where those players are going to go in the actual draft. Jameer Gibbs is going to go ahead of Mark Andrews. For sure. And because of that, uh, you you want to keep Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, I mean, it, sometimes it's it's really simple. It's just math. Um, you, you don't want to – if if you really want Andrews, you, then draft him. You can, you can still draft him, you know, ahead of – you can't – Gibbs will go, I think, a full Second round, round yeah. ahead of yep, Andrews. I agree. Um, I think Andrews has a, has a chance to be undervalued in the upcoming draft because we didn't see him at the end of the year. And so – and the Laporta will, will grab a lot of headlines and Kelsey returning. So I think Andrews will be a third-round pick. Yeah, I, I – he, he'll probably be – the third drafted tight end. I think he goes behind Laporta and Kelsey. And if that is the case, then he'll be of a, a very good value so long as he can stay healthy. I mean, that's that's the knock with Andrews. When he's yeah, out there, it's been a problem. He's great. Uh he just needs to stay out there. All right, another question coming in from Max. He says, Keeper pick, would you take DJ Moore for a fifth rounder or Chris Olave for a second rounder? Um <laughs> This is a pretty easy one for me. Yeah, is it? it, it I, DJ I Moore. It, I think it's very easy. Uh, if for again, me. if you look at it from the standpoint of draft day value and what you can do, like Olave will go in the second round or maybe even later than the second. Yeah, like it's, you're not after. even getting a value. Probably third. Yeah, I, I think he'll probably uh, be in the third. So DJ Moore won't get to the fifth round in any of your drafts. So the value is just. Yeah, you want D on DJ you want Moore, DJ so. Moore and Jameer Gibbs, because if you give that second back, you could use the second on Gibbs. And this is kind of the example of if you're someone that's like, I mean, obviously, we we could be wrong, right? Olave could be so worth it. And if you are looking at this player and you're like, but I love him, I believe in him, I want him, you still don't keep him there because if he's going to go in the third round. Just draft him with your second round. Draft right. him ahead, just like you would keep him for a second. And, DJ and then Moore's you have gonna, DJ yeah. Moore at a value. Who goes whale well above the fifth? Yeah, I was questioning of it. Like, are you so sure? Just because of the variable of Caleb Williams. And I, while CJ Stroud did what he did, and I, there was a little blurb of some, you know, like I think what they were saying, Hall of Famers got together and said that the Stroud Stroud's rookie year that was the the best rookie quarterback year that they had seen. It was it was incredible. He broke every uh, every metric for fantasy football of rookie quarterbacks don't sustain top fifteen fantasy wide receivers. He had essentially two of them in points per game with Tank uh, and Nico. But I will still bet on rookie quarterbacks not sustaining a wide receiver even as good as I think DJ Moore is. So that's that was my only hesitation there. If if it's a rookie, I'm gonna be. I I'll, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying, but Justin Fields threw for 2,500 yards. I mean, this is the but but yeah. his tendency was hyper focused DJ Moore. That will be Caleb Williams' tendency. It could. I think be. it will there, be there, the, tendency you, the tendency of the of, wide receiver core room when it's DJ Moore. Man, nothing well, well, unless the, they take Roma Dunes the, the Bears or something. Yeah. The Bears are set up that they could go a rookie QB and a rookie wide receiver and just go all out super powered offense. Yeah, no, I, it, it's worth but bringing, I, it's worth bringing this, it up. But Olave in the second is too rich, and I love Chris Olave. I personally am on the side where I believe that the percentage chance of rookie quarterbacks doing what Stroud and Herbert did is going to ever increase because that is the that has been the evolution of the quarterback position and the offenses at the NFL level over time. We just went and looked at those old-school passer ratings the other day. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Where, where the – Eight of the top ten passer ratings in football history are active quarterbacks today. <laughs> but and to go into that is those quarterbacks you named were not the first quarterback drafted. Well, I'm not saying you always get it right. I'm just saying that if you discount them all, 
It will be at the peril of the yes, of will, the Nico Collins and Tank Dell and yes, you could have some big, you could end up with some big misses. It just comes down to what you believe about those players. Yep, and you have to be willing to to go with that. All right, Mike Carter wants to know what percentage of trades that you send get accepted. Ooh, that's what a percentage good question. of trades that I send get accepted? <laughs> and. <laughs> Andy's is Andy's zero is be lower. <laughs> zero zero two percent. Because Andy's not afraid to just fire off a bunch of trades at once. Not saying you don't put thought into it, but you're no. You can say it however you want, you're, man. You're you are more likely to shoot a trade off. I when it, it comes, I really overthink even sending the trade offer. Uh, if you fire a hundred golf balls at a green, right? One of them goes in. Two, two might roll in. If you just cannon fire uh -huh, uh -huh. hundred golf balls at a green, yeah, that's your secret. Because even though we talk about endurance, yeah, well, I'm like, yeah. oh, you you get zero point zero two percent of your trades accepted. You still make the most total trades <laughs> completed, which is incredible. Um, you you, so, you do you think about trades? Do you just strategically? Go, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying like, do you just open it up and go? This will be fun. Click, 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 click. No, click, no, click, click. I, I don't. Okay. I think, I think I, I sit down and I, I try to find two or three angles for every team, and then I start there, but then the like counters and stuff they get ramped up. All jokes aside, what what percentage of your trades? Uh, I want to. Uh, I'm curious. Oh, all three each of, us. of us. Yeah, I mean, I would say like three percent. I'd go. 15 to 20 ish yeah I'm, I'm probably about 10 percent i think of my of my offers but it's what do you think papa josh <laughs> i said you go fishing yeah yeah but I, it, I mean but it works and it, to gotta the have the right bait man of andy's strategy and we talk about this a lot of when you're making trades hyper targeting one player like because i'm gonna get that guy your your leverage is zero your your chance of actually getting that you're going to have to overpay more than likely to go get that player where Andy's just trying to find this this improves my team because I'll, it's a, it's this player will fill some statistical holes that I need and it may not be the elite superstar mm. but it helps my team it's moneyball yeah oh i know yes very I much will, moneyball I, i'll tell you why i close trades sometimes more than other people in our league i don't get bogged down with the peripheral non-important parts of the deal I'm willing right. to I'm willing to overpay I'm willing to give an extra pick so that the trade just hits you in the face like I can't pass on that you know when I went after CD lamb you know it's just like okay you don't want to do it for a for, for a second I'll give you two seconds just in two seconds I that's the decision I make is like I'm just gonna give you I'm gonna make it so that you feel dumb not taking my trade even though I want the best player out of the deal and it doesn't always work but it did this year um all right would you trade AJ Brown straight up for a 2020 for the 2024 101 in a dynasty rookie draft? Would you trade AJ Brown away to basically get Marvin Harrison Jr.? No, no, I wouldn't. I I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is as good a prospect as we've seen since probably since Megatron. Just as far as like, wow, that that high up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I think so. But at the same time, he hasn't done it on the NFL field. We don't know his landing spot. We there I would are be a lot tempted. of there are a lot of great, great looking wide receivers that don't hit the way we hope. AJ Brown already has hit. AJ Brown is a superstar. Yes, he's a top ten wide receiver in fantasy next he's, year in the draft. He's super 20, young. He's he'll be turning twenty seven. Yeah, year. that's not super young compared to the other guys at the top of our dynasty. Like he's the oldest of the top seven that we have by consensus at twenty six point six years old. Um, you have him the highest, Jason, at five right now in our dynasty rankings. I got him at seven, Mike at six. So we all – I just think it's a gamble you could take. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so would you? I think I would, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't like some of what happened last year in Philly with A.J. Brown. And so I do worry a little bit about the unraveling potential there. So it is funny. Another way to think about the exact same thing is if this is a startup draft – and you can draft your, yeah, picks. You know, yeah. you you could draft the one hundred and one. Um, it, you know, wherever it's a matter of saying, okay, I think Marvin Harrison then is, well, like a, a top 
five, six, seven, eight. Like he's clearly a first round, not just rookie first round, but you're saying a first round startup pick. For I mean, if, if he's Kyler Murray's number one, and you guys are both very bullish on Kyler long term, I think it's a decision to be made. I'm, Mike, what would you yeah. do? Would you do it or not? I, at this point right now, I don't think I would. Okay. I'm, if you tell me, like, if you lock in Marvin to the Arizona Cardinals, okay, now, now the conversation is even more interesting. I'm, but the NFL draft can be very painful to those who have very, really high rookie picks. Like, remember how excited everyone was and opportunity, or, uh, situation is not everything. I will say that we say that all the time, but when JSN went to the Seattle Seahawks and everyone with the one Oh two went, oh, I guess I still take him or maybe I take Gibbs now. So with, with all the rumors abound, you would, we got it. The Patriots at three. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm, That's why I really not, like to know the team I first. If you want to let me know that I am not projecting that the Patriots are taking Marvin Harrison. I think that they should take a quarterback. But imagine a world where draft night happens and the Patriots take Harrison at number three. How you're going to collective you're going to feel like you yeah. got punched in the heart. <laughs> like, seriously, if you have that, the, that doesn't sound fun. I don't think I've have, ever been punched in my heart. No, I think it could stop it. Or if you it's a death punch. If you do have the Bears not take Caleb Williams, if they trade right. back two spots, and now he's yeah, the and, number two, right? For Justin Fields, there's yes. there's ways it could go wrong. That's that's yeah. Where, no, that's that, and that's fair. That's why you, it makes sense to keep what you know. It's tantalizing though. It oh, is. for sure. Instagram question: What is the worst reason that you have passed on a guy in a fantasy draft? <laughs> the worst. The, uh, okay. I think I know that I probably have passed on players because I almost don't want your takes to be right about them. <laughs> mm, okay. And That's the prob- truth. That, I mean, oh, don't give me that. I'm not alone. Three. I'm not alone there probably. <laughs> okay. I mean, I does that make sense? Yo, oh, yeah, 100%. That I'm is, sure I've been that sitting is hilarious. there. I'm sure I've been sitting there with Michael Pittman at a value in a yeah. draft before. Yeah. Najee yeah. Harris, you think I've probably made some wrong decisions before. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know. That's I, the I, best I, thing I can come I, up with. I think it's it's when you've been oh, man. burned by a player. When, when oh, you, yeah. When you've got the scars from a previous season and you're like, that Mike that didn't dude. have a lot of DeAndre Swift. Is right, what you're saying? exactly. Yeah. Mike wouldn't have drafted DeAndre Swift in the yeah. undrafted ranks. He wouldn't put him on the roster even if he's a value uh last year because of the scars from the year prior i think that's the most common poor reason to to miss out on a pick but it's gonna keep happening do you have any must have players already for next year's draft regardless of value this is a question from irish boy eight on instagram man do you already have any must have players for next season yes kyron really kyron williams Kyron Williams is a – I mean, obviously he's going to be uh, a wow. first, but he's like a, a a must to me. I think he's the second best running back. So then that, that top so five like, discussion? Yeah, so the one when we yeah we, 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 uh, he was the name I, – I, we moved on, so I didn't go back to it, but I was going to bring Kyron up because I think he's right there. That's – I mean, that's a profound statement. Um, the, No one's on the must draft list, but the, the short list of – I'm re- really intrigued would be like Anthony Richardson – Assuming his shoulder is okay, because it it was a, a a tough surgery to come back from. We'll see if he's all right, but I I think that he will be still a higher draft pick in the middle rounds. But what he can do, fantasy wise, I I, I think he's going to be a really sought after guy the following year. I think Tank Dell is the name coming to mind. Okay, did you see C.J. Stroud talk about his super team? Mm-mm. He was on a Michael Parsons podcast, and um, he was asked to like build your perfect offensive lineup. So his wide receiver is always interesting when you ask a quarterback of an actual team to pick yeah. a team. So his wide receivers were Devontae Adams on one side. Um, oh gosh, why am I forgetting the other side of the field? It was another big time wide receiver. 
And See, Tank Dell? Tank was his slot guy. Oh, baby. And all wow. the offense. Not Nico. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, and the offense, a, offensive linemen were, you know, from other teams. And, you know, it's like Nico's not Lane Jackson was his either. right tackle. And his his running back, um, I don't remember who his running. Oh, it was Jameer Gibbs was his running back. You know what I mean? Like, so he built this super team out, but Tank Dell was a slot guy. And I, I just think he's so talented. Like, if you remember years ago when we kind of, like, saw Stephon Diggs in Minnesota mm -hmm. and it was like, oh. Well, that guy's going to be a superstar. I don't care where he's drafted. Like Tank Dell's on that path. So, all right, quick break. Back with some more questions. Well, before we answer a couple more questions, uh, I did want to throw a little shout out because we had yes, Candice, who was he's she's a huge fan of the show. She was on Wheel of Fortune last week. That's so awesome. For NFL Super Fan Week. And she wanted, she said she wanted to pimp the show, but they wouldn't let her. Yeah. Right. What's so, that all about, what's Say that Jack? About? Yeah. Don't mention the name of that show. Is Say Jack still oh, yeah. on there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're not talking about their show. Yeah. It's the we're one with the the big wheel. <laughs> you can make a <laughs> fortune. <laughs> you can make a lot of money. What? But shout out to, uh, yeah, shout to, out Candace, to Candace who went to the bonus round. If you could go on any game show, which one would you go on? I'll tell you right now, I don't know the answer, but it will be <laughs> the one with the least embarrassment possible to okay, me. Okay, you want to go I, low stakes. I low I do not like I think it's um so it's price not, is right. It's not millionaire. No, I think it's price is right where like the worst thing that happens to me is I don't get a treadmill. You know what I mean? Right. But and you lose, and then it's now someone else is up. Yeah, playing again. I don't. I we do, move on real fast. I can't be there. <laughs> I can't be there and do the like the wheel of fortune when they misread the the answer. Oh, that's oh, oh man. yeah. Some and of then, those videos, I mean, those can be brutal. <laughs> those, I can't be in that position because when I'm in when the pressure's on, I'm afraid I'm going to shrink. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe maybe I come through big time. Our own Al Borland was on a game show on a cruise ship this past week. Wait, what? In front of 2,000 people and won. What? what? Is that right? Not, what, what game? It was with his son. Uh, it was called What's Age Got to Do With It? And it's a, a parent-child uh, competition. Against but he won it. Wow. That's, so oh, that's man. a man that doesn't shrink. I can't wait shrink, for this story. At least in international waters. I had, the, I had one time where one of the Disney's, and I think it was basically it was like who wants to be a millionaire, but everyone gets to play. And did you win it? No, no. Oh. But the uh, you as as the person is playing, everyone in the audience is also playing. But time is a massive factor mm. in it. So I mean, you gotta you gotta get it in, be right. And then there was about the halfway point before the next person comes up, and so they show you know who's leading. I was leading. And I went into a full panic attack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it was, you're like. The knowledge of the fact you were winning. All you want is, oh, dude, I want to go do it. And then I'm actually staring down. And I'm just, you know, in front of 50 people or whatever. And the fact that I almost got to go up there, I just start sweating. My hands <laughs> are all shaking. My heart starts going like 150. So you got, you have it a, would be tough. a game show, Jason? Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not as big of in to win but man i would love to do the family feud yeah that's, that's just fun yeah. like that game is fun they must drive it home to every person on that show that they have to clap and say good answer no they have to. yes yeah like that sure. like yes. if you don't do it they will the big hook will come and grab yeah, you you're and, not allowed on the show if you don't say good answer yeah good answer. all right um noah wants to know what tyreek hill's dynasty value is is it a good time to trade him away uh you know Ty trade him to me my team could use him. <laughs> I was going to say Tyreek is is one of those assets in Dynasty where he's very, very, very valuable to a contender, and he is not the right piece for a rebuild. Um, I I think he has two more seasons under contract. How and he, whether or not he follows through, he told us. Yes, he told the public when he was going to retire. I think it was it was that it was he was, was going to finish more? out this contract and then walk away. That was what he said. Obviously, things change. Um, plenty of players walk away when they don't expect and stay longer than they thought. Um, but right now, I'm that's kind of how I'm mentally valuing Tyreek Hill is I'm seeing him as two more awesome seasons than zero, than nothing. Not like two uh, more. That's, that's super valuable. 
Yeah, and That's I agree. Crazy, I agree. Buddy. That's why I, I've got. We have them at five, nine, and eight as a teaser for the dynasty rankings here. I have them at five, Mike eight, Jason nine. Yeah. It, so, I mean, he's still a very valuable asset. Yeah. Oh, if you're going for it. But if, if you are a, if you are truly in a rebuild, looking at your roster going, this, I'm so far away from the playoffs, then I'd probably trade him away. If you're looking at your team with the rookie picks you have saying, hey, if some, some things bounce right, I could get in the tournament. And that's what that's all you got to do is have players like Tyreek Hill once you're in the, the playoff situation and hope that they go nuclear in those couple weeks. Otherwise, I'd move them. This question uh, from Game Over says, are y'all dropping a fantasy baseballer podcast? <laughs> Are you talking about my Diamondbacks? Oh, uh, you do have a D-backs. <laughs> and that's funny because all the all the baseball teams yesterday, the second the Super Bowl ended, they had their uh, it's baseball season tweets going out. So, Jason, are you are you going to host that one for us? Yeah, man. Pitchers Dude, and catchers Nolan report on Nolan Ryan. Okay, <laughs> yeah. that's who you need to draft. He's so good at throwing the baseball. Well, I mean, you you must have a few other suggestions. Yeah, oh, for Cecil sure. Fielder. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hold on, Babe Ruth. <laughs> oh man, uh, I really thought back. you could get Gonzo. I can't remember Gonzo. his. That's just a... yes, yeah, the Muppet. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is where you're adding baseball names now. Uh, Mariano Rivera. <laughs> uh, nice. Mike, you want to uh, throw a few more in there? Um, Kent Herbeck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, we get some Craig Biggio know, up in here. I know we have a a, a good player on the D backs, and all I, the only name that's coming to my head is Corbin Dallas, which is that is that is the action star from uh, Corbin, Fifth Element. It's Corbin Cor Carroll. It's Corbin Carroll. Ah, okay, Corbin right. Dallas from Fifth Element. <laughs> so, what do you think? You answer the question for yourself out there. Whether you, we're do you want to listen to it? Or whether you just let, let they us would. know if this sounds. The whole show is us naming. Players who are from the nineties, who are like they're eighty years old or they're deceased already. Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> oh man! Oh, he he was one of the killer bees, right? Yeah, with Big Biggio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great job, Mike. I wonder if <laughs> if you locked me in a room, and you said like you have to name fifty baseball players, and then they'll release your family from the hostage situation. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I don't get out of the room until I literally sit down and come up with fifty. Right. I, I wonder if I could do it. Like, at all time. Yeah. Uh, you, he starts naming characters from Field of Dreams. <laughs> right. That that's, Hey, those, they're, those were real players Yeah. at yeah. some point. All right. Uh, Alex Tabor says, or asks, how do I convince my redraft league to switch to a keeper? Ooh. Well... Keepers are my Come most. On. <laughs> yeah, you hit them with a. Come, Come on. on. Um, keeper leagues are a, an absolute blast. Um, they, that's my favorite format. Our league of record is a keeper where we basically get to take three players over to the next year. It gives us assets in draft picks to be able to trade. It allows the draft to still be extremely important and matter, just like a redraft. But it it keeps it you know completely going like there there's no real off season now now we're in a part of our keeper league that can be fun again um convincing other people to do it that's the argument that's the story I think what you if you have one league that you're very close with that's great you you know and you're wanting to convert you, you either will get the support naturally people will be like heck yeah that sounds great let's do it and if they don't and you're needing to convince them, then what I would try is creating just a second league with that. Say, you know, let's keep that that league going, but let's also add a keeper league. Um, that would be my only advice of being able to try to convince people who aren't already in it. Yeah, the 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 part that I like about the keeper leagues is um, this the changes strategy a bit, but then I, I've become more invested in certain players because you end up it, it's not all the time but sometimes you'll you'll have a guy kept for three or four years which i actually think is more of a rarity now but when you find that one player and you hit when they're in antonio brown in is, your, time, is yours yes. like yeah. antonio brown is a is yeah we mike know Wright's. we know him as mike's yeah and you guys you you didn't get to the 
experience. No, it was a tor- the, it was a torture chamber. The greatness that was Antonio Brown. Yeah, it's, and that's why I'm I'm really hoping I'm beginning that that with CD the CD Lamb lineage hey, here. You and me both, bro, both brother. Bro, you and me both. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. That's gonna be it. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back with another show on Thursday, a rookie review episode. So, uh, for those of you like us, utterly obsessed with fantasy football, we don't go away. We kick it into gear, right here, right now. UltimateDraftKit.com. If you want to pick up the UDK and the UDK Plus, it's available right now at the lowest possible price. It is a pre-order discount. UDK Plus gives you access to all those dynasty rankings we referenced today so you can uh, set the table for a great 2024, bring home that Foot Clan title. Until next time, for Kent Herbeck, (laughs) Jeff Bagwell, and Nolan Ryan, this is the Fantasy Footballers. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.